Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at uh, another way to be able to monitor your server remotely, uh, taking a look at a program called iStat2. Now when you're away from your server, uh, as I just was on a trip, I want to know what's going on uh, with the hardware components of my server, uh, as well as some of the server functions and things like that. And so uh, iStat2 makes it really easy for you to be able to uh, basically just monitor your server from a distance, monitor all kinds of critical things like heat and, and those kinds of things. And so uh, it's a, a really nice piece of software. It fits right on your iOS device. You can put it right on your iPhone or, so, or uh, iPad, uh, something that you probably have with you on a trip, and you'd be able to access your server and make sure that everything's working okay. Uh, just by looking at the basic diagnostics. So uh, this is it on the page uh, for uh, Bajango who uh, makes this application. Uh, as you can see it's uh, they have an iPad version. It, it's a universal application so it'll work on the iPad as well as the iPhone. Now in order to install this uh, there's two components to it. You'll have to buy the application on the uh, Mac apps on the actual App Store, the iOS App Store uh, for your iPhone or your iPad. And then you'll have to install this uh, iStat server for Mac. Uh, you just click this uh, iStat for Mac server right here. It takes you to the next page which talks a little bit about how this works and you just go right here to download it and start the download process. Now I've already downloaded and installed the application so let me just uh, put this down here and launch uh, iStat server for a minute. And so once iStat server launches you get this uh, little launch uh, this little window right here uh, that gets you uh, set up to be able to add your device uh, to the iStat server. And so what it has, it has a couple of simple things. You can create a new passcode, and this is the passcode right here that I'll use. You can lock your passcode so that basically it will hide all of these numbers, and you need a administrator password to your computer in order to unlock it. Uh, you can reset authorizations for different devices and things that you have connected to it. And so once I do that, I'd have to log in with administrator password to make that work. I'm just going to leave that alone. And then you can also show uh, a log that shows uh, who was connected and how they were connected. And so if I just click on that, you can see uh, when you connected and how and through what uh, service and device and those kinds of things. So very simple little application. Uh, it is running on port uh, 5109, but you will have to actually open that port uh, to make it work. And so you can do that uh, right within uh, OS X server uh, to make that happen. So let me pull up server and show you how that works. Okay, here we are over on the server. And uh, if you've got an airport extreme or a time capsule uh, that your server is managing, you'll see this screen here. Uh, if for some reason you don't have uh, an Apple router, if you've got some other kind of router, you'll have to open the ports uh, on the software that comes with your router. Uh, but here we are within the server application. You can see I've added iStat server, but let me show you how it works to set this up. You just come and click the plus button here, and you're going to add a service. And so what you'll do is come down here and click Other. And what it'll do is it'll just ask for the service name, which what I put in was, you know, iStat server, and then the port, which was 5109. And then you just click Add. And when you're done with that, I'm just going to cancel because I've already got it. When you're done, it will add that service right here. And so once you've done that, it will open the port on your router to allow the service to work remotely because that's what you're going to want to do in order for that to work. So let me just pop down the server application there. So once you've got all that set up and everything's ready to go, uh, what you're going to want to do is go over to your iOS device now and download uh, the iStat application and use it from there. Now I'm going to show you how that works, but one thing you want to keep in mind, you need to leave the iStat server running. Uh, you don't have to have this screen up here uh, when you get it up and running, but you do need to use the ser uh, leave the server up and running or otherwise there's no way to connect back to your computer. So leave that running and uh, let's switch over to my iPhone and I'll show you how this works. Okay, here I am over on my iPhone and I've uh, downloaded iStat and it's $4.99 for a universal application so this will work both on your iPhone as well as your iOS device. So let's go ahead and launch it for the, for the first time here. And so once you launch into iStat, uh, the great thing about it is that it automatically recognizes your iOS device because it does give you stats and things on your iOS device as well. You can see we've got a search servers area uh, right here where I can search. If I just tap this, I can actually search for different servers. So if I've got a whole bunch of servers that I'm managing, uh, I can watch them and search for them and just kind of filter them that way. I'm going to click cancel. 
I see a big plus button up on the right hand side and then you see my iPhone there with some other gears and things down there. So let's start just real quickly by looking at the settings down in the corner here. So down in the bottom and under the settings you can set your server uh, sort order. Uh, if you click on that it can be by display name or by server type if you want to organize your different servers that way. Uh, you can also set the temperature uh, to be Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin. Uh, since we're in the U.S. here, I'm going to put Fahrenheit uh, and go back. Uh, you can also select uh, the iPhone to be on, uh, the iPhone on launch. Um, and so that's a setting you can turn that on or off. I'm just going to leave that one alone because, um, you know, what it's going to do is take you right into the iPhone right away so that you're looking at those stats first when you actually launch the application. Uh, I don't want to do that. I want to see a list of everything. Uh, you can also sync uh, your settings and everything by iCloud. So it'll sync between your different iOS devices. So if you've got multiple devices, again, if you've got an iPad, let's say, and an iPhone, uh, you could sync your servers and everything between those so you don't have to put them in more than once. Uh, and then it's got a basic uh, about section which just gives you uh, some information about the application, uh, the developer's Twitter apps, that uh, Twitter handle, that kind of stuff. So let's go back for settings. So I've got just about everything there that I need, so I'm just going to click Done. So that takes care of that. The other thing in the left-hand corner, real quick, is that you do have a uh, tips and help area where it talks about how to install the different aspects of this, uh, the different servers it can monitor, and just the fact that uh, some stats, if you tap on them, you can open them up and it'll give you more information. Uh, you also see down there you've got an online help button which will take you to the online help. So let's click done. All right, and uh, so let's do this first. Let's take a look at my iPhone so you can see the kind of stats and things that it gives you. And so right away when you come into the application, it uh, shows you uh, various things about your device. So with my iPhone device here, you can see that uh, it's showing uh, you know, how long I've been on the web, how many minutes I've talked uh, with the video, uh, how many minutes I've looked at there. You can see my web usage, music, standby, those kinds of things. Those are kind of just uh, all the information I have there. You can see uh, the battery drain there. And, and those are all stats of you know how long my phone will stay on if I'm using certain... Uh, applications and things, right? So if I'm on the web, you know, I got six hours, uh, you know, talk time, 448, and it just kind of adjusts. And so what's nice about that is it does give you kind of an idea of what's going to take up the most time. And hey, if I watch a video or watch a movie, how much time do I have left on this, uh, on this battery? Uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, you also notice here, you can see the uh, free space on here, how much space I have left and how much I've used. Uh, you can see my wired and uh, active uh, in terms of the memory and stuff and how much I'm using. You can see that adjust back and forth. You can see my page ins and outs uh, with a nice uh, scrolling graphic there. Uh, you can see what, what percentage are users or which percentage is idle or the system. Uh, again, you can just see all these different stats on the different things I'm using. You see Wi-Fi down here, cellular, uh, and my uptime. And so it gives a, gives a nice little, uh, at a glance, uh, look at my stats and things uh, that are happening on my particular phone right now. Just by pushing this other little uh, button up in the corner, and if you click that, you can, you can actually uh, put down the things that you want to look at. So battery disk, I can turn off the things I don't want. If I want, I can move them around, like maybe I want uptime in front of network or not. And once I make these adjustments, it'll change them on the other screen. I can reorder them. Uh, that's for the different sections. You can see here on my network, I can choose whether to view Wi-Fi and cellular. And again, I can choose what order I want to view them in uh, and do it that way. It's going to click Done. All right, let's go back to the servers and let's actually add our server, our uh, Mac Mini server that we've got rolling. So I just click the plus button at the top. And what it does is it takes us into this screen here that has us put in the name and then the address of our server. And so I'm just going to put uh, the name of the server here. I'm just going to put home. Let's just put that down for right now. Uh, let's make that a capital. All right, and then the server address. And so what you'd put in here is, you know, on, on your network, you put in your server name or you'd put in the IP address number. So I'm going to put that information in here right now and uh, then show you how this works. Okay, now that we've got everything on there, we've got the address, the port number is all set at 5109. Then we just go ahead and click Save. And so it's added my server on there. You can see it says Home, and so the server is set up and ready to go. So let's get into it and see if it works. Right away, you've taken to the passcode section, and this is where we put in the passcode that was showing on the server uh, when we ran iStat server on our computer. Since I'm doing this on my computer, I can just pull that up in front here so you can see, see the number that it gave me. You'll notice that my iPhone's showing on here already. And so all I need to do then is put in the number uh, that I see on uh, down below there. So I'm going to put that in. 
And as soon as I do that, let me just put this down here. As soon as I do that, you can see a couple of things. You can see now that it's letting me right into the server. Uh, but you'll also see down below here, you'll notice that it also shows that I'm connected and you can see the sent data and my connection time. So the nice thing is a server app lets you monitor those things as well. So let me just pop that down. So here we are inside the application. You can see that there's an update uh, for iStat's server available. And so what's nice is it tells me that the actual server app that I've got on my computer, on my server, needs to be updated and I can make that, uh, make that update happen. If I just click more info, it'll actually take me over to the website and give me some information on what's changed and what's different and allows me to update it. So I'm going to, uh, let's pop out of that for a minute. Let's go right back into iStat. So I'm just going to hide this for right now. And there you go, very simple interface. You can see I've got my user system information at the top here uh, that's telling me uh, the amount that the system's using and I'm using. So again, I'm monitoring my server now. Uh, I've also got, uh, you can see right here, I've got uh, more information on, on some of the uptime. I've got my interfaces that are sitting right here, uh, wired uh, as well as active in terms of my uh, memory setup, my page ins and outs. I've got my various drives and things that are on here. Uh, I've also got my temperature sensors and this is really important because this is where I get to see uh, how, how the temperature is doing and how well uh, my computer is handling uh, itself and then my fan exhaust and that just tells me my computer's hot, uh, you know, how, what's the cycles, uh, what's the RPMs on the fan sensors that are inside uh, my computer as well so that I get a good feel for how everything's going with heat. Also shows me the uptime, shows me again all of my drives. And so it is a, uh, it's really a really simple way to monitor and take a look at uh, your server so you can see the things that are going on. If I just click again up here, like I said before, here are, I can customize all this stuff. And you can see I can have all the other sensors here. I can move these things around. Maybe I want my fans uh, up, up ahead of uh, temperatures. That's going to change that now. Uh, on the network, again, whether all the interfaces are on or off or not. Uh, I do want all the interfaces on. And so once I've done that, you see, you'll see if you scroll down, now my fan exhaust has moved up in front of the temperatures. So that's, uh, that's really it in a nutshell. Uh, like I said, it's a very simple way to monitor your servers. Uh, let me show you one more thing. Uh, if you're adding your certain, you can see I can disconnect here and notice the little silver uh, disconnect button there. That's how I can disconnect from it monitoring. So that's all I have for this week. That just gives you an idea of how to be able to monitor your server remotely. Uh, I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.